Thank you, Jose. And, and remember that Jose will be available for Q&A uh, during our roundtable discussion following this next presentation, which is a case study from Tier 1 Metal Forming Company, Thai Summit America Corp. Our speakers are Tony Kazmarek, President of Coors Engineering, and Janice D'Amico, Executive Manager of IT for Thai Summit America. Tony Kazmarek has more than 25 years of experience in the controls and business automation industry, during which, uh, which time he has helped manufacturing companies establish metrics, improve performance, and reduce waste while deploying open architecture and non-proprietary options. Janice D'Amico at Thai Summit America leads a cutting edge technology team driven by metrics, real-time data, and the IoT evolution. Janice has implemented numerous software platforms across many types of operations, including launching ERP platforms globally in Europe, Mexico, India, China, and Thailand. Please welcome Tony and Janice. Great, thank you so much, Brad. Really appreciate it and uh, appreciate the opportunity to present uh, to PMA and uh, excited to, uh, to talk about uh, Thai Summit here today. So I'm Tony Kazmarek, uh, President of Coors Engineering. I'll be uh, co-presenting with uh, Janice uh, from Thai Summit. Uh, gonna dive right into things, a little bit about Coors Engineering. We've been around for uh, 43 years, more than 43 years, and uh, actually over half of that time, we've been doing integration to the cloud. We've been doing IoT. So we've been doing IoT basically longer than IoT has existed as, as an acronym. Uh, we're uh, around 100 customers and uh, around 200 plants in 18 states and 13 countries around the world. We're somewhere around uh, 5,500 to maybe 7,000 work centers are integrated. You really don't have an accurate count of that because 90% of our uh, work centers that are integrated with Mach 2 are actually done by our customers. So we don't have a really good accurate count of that. We're doing well over a million transactions a day with our systems uh, talking to the cloud and uh, billions of transactions to date. We kind of lost uh, track of, of how many billions. So one of the things that we've noticed, and this was true before um, the pandemic hit, is, is really how much pressure manufacturers are, are under. <clears throat> there's uh, a, an expectation to do a lot more with a lot less. Uh, there's more requirements uh, from your OEMs. So uh, traceability and validation and quality and mixed lots and, and JIT and all these types of things are are really kind of stacking up to, to make your jobs more difficult. Um, you're seeing more flexibility and more product diversity. Uh, customers want more different types of options available. So that puts more impact again on, on you, of course. And uh, with recalls and whatnot, there's a lot more data to track. There's more volume. There's a, a more detail that needs to be captured. And unfortunately, a lot of that information is supposed to be captured by your operators. Operators are supposed to be making parts, not spending time uh, doing something that they're not necessarily good at, spending time in front of a computer doing data entry and, and uh, analysis. So you've got to do all of this additional stuff with less. Um, see a lot of our customers are seeing uh, capacity issues. Uh, everybody's running at capacity. Uh, there's a shortage of, of skilled people out there. So you have less people, you have less skilled people out there. Um, and of course, you have less budget and less time to be able to deliver on those types of things. So working with uh, customers, we see a, a lot of the, well, here's why we're not doing it. Um, a lot of people are concerned that it's still bleeding edge. It's next generation. It's really not proven. Uh, there's a lot of concern with the systems that they have in place that they're going to have to tear everything out and put in all new controllers, program all of those controllers, put in new infrastructure, replace everything. Uh, there's concern that there's a lot of expertise required. I'm going to need new training. I'm going to have to hire expensive people. I'm going to have to bring in a whole team. If I don't do that, or even if I do do that, I may need to bring in outside contractors. Uh, and that, that places additional burden on us, of so additional cost. Um, there's concern that we're going to need uh, additional IT uh, servers and software, operating systems, databases, uh, uh, you know, $30,000 service. So there's a lot of concern about the IT investment that it's going to take. Then there's a lot of uh, concern around uh, that it's going to take a long time. This is something that's going to take years to, to be able to get things really rolling, and it's a huge investment. And then I think there's a lot of concern around this is just going to be one more piece of software that I need to man manage, one more piece of software that I have to do data entry into, licensing, uh, expertise to, to get into those systems. So it's uh, 
places a lot of uh, concerns around uh, people that are taking a look into IoT. So we like to kind of walk in with our customers and say, ah, how about why not? Um, this isn't something that's new. Again, this is something that we've been doing for 20 years. This isn't an art anymore. This is something that we are doing on a daily basis. And more importantly, this is something our customers are doing on a daily basis. Um, and I think most often people don't realize how much we're able to use their existing systems, their existing controllers, their existing infrastructure and, and uh, networking. Uh, in cases where we're not able to use those systems, uh, one of the things that we've seen with IoT is really the advent of more cost-effective technology. So there's new devices for doing data input, whether that's uh, digital or analog, um, or there's different ways of presenting that information. So uh, as our customers are deploying solutions throughout the plant and trying to get visualization to their operators or to their supervisors, uh, they're trying to look a, at a cost-effective way. So that historically, you would look at these, these uh, plant floor displays and you'd be looking at you know, $3,000 for, for a, a monitor to put on the plant floor. Kind of a joke, but uh, somewhat serious about telling our customers, we'll wait until Black Friday and, and uh, go to Best Buy and, and uh, buy 30 TVs at, uh, you know, 250 bucks a piece. Uh, so the ability to collect and present that data has, has really changed with the advent of, you know, technology costs coming down so quickly. Um, so it's it's pretty it's much more cost effective than a lot of people think on, on just bringing in some simple or in some cases even more complex signals uh, for us to be able to turn that into IoT data and get that into your business systems. Um, most of our customers are are uh, really able to take advantage of this without having uh, high expertise. I think there was. Uh, the old types of systems that you would deploy, the old SCADA systems, you would have to have coders and scripters and a lot of expertise in uh, PLCs and, and uh, ladder logic and protocols and all those types of things. One of the things that we've really tried to do is, is um, diversify the, the amount of people that are t uh, able to work on our systems. Uh, because we are code free, we have a lot more diversity in, in users. So they might be IT background, they may be PLC background or maintenance background. We have IT directors, we have even interns being able to manage and scale the solutions. So with that code-free environment, we've really seen the, an openness to be able to, to uh, get into our systems and, and scale and manage those systems. And from that part, we see our, a lot bigger uh, roles and ownership of Mach 2. So it takes that outside contractor and those outside costs and brings that into something that you can control, that you can scale at your own pace and, and kind of grow uh, internally without having to ri rely completely on uh, outside sources. Uh, a lot of the software these days, and that's another big advent that I've seen with IoT is, is really um, software and solutions have become much leaner uh, they know that they have a, a more purpose-built uh, role, so they're able to, to really um, bring down the, the cost of infrastructure, whether that's a physical or a virtual server, you know, where they reside and how they communicate. So that's there's, there's really become a lot to, less of an impact on the IT infrastructure. And one of our, our goals is, is really to get um, delivery very rapidly, and we do that through a lot of out-of-the-box functionality. So our goal is to, to minimize, at least at the kickoff, as much development as possible and put that into out of the box so they can deploy solutions very quickly and see a lot of valuable as rapidly as possible. Um, and the cost of these systems, uh, when I, in my old days, uh, 15, 20 years ago, when we were doing control systems and integration and automation, it wasn't unusual for those projects to be hundreds of thousands of dollars and have huge investments and huge timelines and lots of teams of experts um, we're doing solutions that are, are much, uh, much leaner than that. Uh, it's not unusual for us to have one or two people involved uh, doing an implementation. These are very low cost, very rapid implementations, some in, 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 in as little as a few days. Uh, and uh, low cost subscriptions and even month to month solutions uh, continue to make that cost of entry um, easier and easier. And then really one of our goals is not to have one more disparate system. Uh, it's, it's for us to basically, basically link into your business systems. Uh, we do a lot of Plex integration, and what that means is Plex is a system of record for the ERP and MES and allows uh, the customer to manage everything. The jobs, the parts, the rates, the containers, the labels, everything is done inside of Plex. 
uh, and basically uses our system as, as a mechanism to turn basically machines into users of the business system. So it eliminates one more layer of data entry and management and, and uh, supervision of all of those types of things and keeps everything within your business systems. So really one of our biggest goals with uh, our product is to provide an on-ramp. Uh, you'll see I put IIoT here, that's the, the industrial internet of things. So just kind of a, a different phrase along with uh, industry 4.0. So our goal again is, is over the years we've tried to, to make our package so there's minimal setup, there's uh, as little development as possible and make it much more of a configuration tool for getting things up and running instead of a developer's tool, a coder's tool, a scripting tool. This is something again that we can take um, this out of the box functionality, put it into the hands of, of uh, a diverse group of people to be able to, to really run your systems and, and tie that data again, turn your machines into users, into your system of record, into your ERP, into your MES system. Do that rapidly, do that with a minimal investment. And then really one of our goals is, is to put in a platform, uh, kind of plant that seed and, and get things rolling and, and set a platform for customization and growth. Um, typically with the way that we do that is, is we do that uh, pilot where we'll get um, basically definition of how you want your business systems on the plant floor to interact with your, your ERP, your MES uh, or your workflow. We'll build that out, uh, basically prove it out, debug it, make sure it's working exactly as you expect. Uh, and then we bring customers in for a couple of days of training and, and expose the tools of, of uh, Mach 2 uh, so our customers are able to basically use that as an on-the-job training experience and uh, builds up a platform for them to be able to, to grow and scale the systems on their own. And again, really uh, one of our primary goals is, is to make those connections from the plant floor into the ERP, uh, into Plex, into other business systems as easy and rapidly as possible. So again, you can focus on the deliverable instead of worrying about how you're gonna get there. And one of our big goals is, is uh, we look at a lot of those uh, features and functions of the out of the boxes, what we call day one experience. We know that this is just the start of the conversation. Usually our customers don't approach us necessarily for OEE or performance dashboards, those types of things. There's a greater need that, they, that they're trying to uh, address, something with their OEM, something with, uh, that's uh, a deficiency on the plant floor. So they're looking for something bigger, something longer. So we're always looking at providing that platform to address those continued improvements, to, to meet those specific goals and challenges. Uh, so our product is a full SCADA system there's a couple things that uh, it really focuses on. The, the first is communication. So basically um, normalizing the plant floor, uh, turning all of those different disparate uh, PLCs and makes and models and systems and, and databases and normalizing that information, putting some context to it uh, by talking into your business systems, blending that together and delivering visualizations and communicating uh, to your operators, to your supervisors, through dashboard views, through operator interfaces, HMIs, digital whiteboards, those types of things. Then the next big thing that we try to, uh, next big step that we try to take is to get into automating things. Um, again, trying to take that burden off of operators and allowing um, the machines to do data entry, basically. So it's always accurate, it's always timely, um, and you're capturing information about your production counts, about your uh, machine downtime, you're automating line side labeling, you're <clears throat> checking in source material, you're doing quality checks, piece serialization, all of those types of things. Again, we can reduce that impact on your operator, allow them to focus on making parts, but still meet your OEM customer requirements uh, for everything that they're looking for. And then finally, getting into validation. Um, we like to basically provide solutions that allow you to make sure that uh, basically your, your shop floor and the top floor are completely synchronized and they know exactly uh, what's being shipped, um, making sure that the right parts are being made at the right places, that they're packaged in the right way, and that the parts and pieces are made pro properly. Make sure they've got the right torque, the right angle, the right temperatures, the right pressures, making sure that it's going through the right sequence and it hasn't skipped a step. Uh, so we're doing a lot of validation on those steps. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that our customers are, are setting up the roadmap. There's a lot of different ways to get from point A to point B to point C. So really our goal is to provide a platform that allows them to get there at their own pace, um, 
with their own budget, with their own equipment, with their own timeline. Uh, so that gives them the flexibility to get there. So really want to focus on the real stars of the show, um, Janice uh, from Thai Summit and some of the things that they're doing over there. Uh, so you get a, a much more tactile uh, understanding of, of some of the things that uh, our customers are doing. Janice? Thank you very much, Tony and Brad, and hello to the PMA uh, community. I'm very happy to be here today and share with you what Thai Summit America has done with uh, the Porous Engineering Product Mach 2. But first of all, I'd like to share with you a little bit about Thai Summit Group. So the company actually began in Asia and Thailand. Uh, there are over 50 facilities and it's rapidly growing throughout the Asia community and now into North America. It is a woman owned company. Dr. Samhorn carried on the business after her husband's sudden passing. She is a very savvy entrepreneur who also has businesses in the Manhattan area and several commercial businesses throughout the Michigan suburbs. Her footprint into North America began with the Thai Summit Group, where she wanted to expand her diversity throughout the automotive industry, appliance and motorcycle groups to really build the Thai Summit Group organization beyond the 1.3 billion organization it is today. So her beginning in North America was our facility here that we're going to focus on today in Howell. And the Thai Summit America Corporation was created in 2009 when Dr. Samporn and the Thai Summit Group purchased Ogahara Corporation. Our guiding principles here are teamwork, social responsibility, and continuous improvement, along with an initiative for strong leadership. I think that's an important point as we get into talking about launching anything new relative to software. It's all about the team and leadership. Our Howell facility occupies just over 1.3 million square feet. Uh, we all get our steps in here as we're walking across this organization that rides along the 96 uh, freeway here in Howell. We have a 150 acre site. We're just finishing our latest expansion to hold some of the new business that I'll be sharing with you. And we also have a facility down in Bardstown, Kentucky, the bourbon capital of the world that we established in 2016. And it sits on an 82 acre site. Uh, the production equipment there really mirrors everything that we're doing here in Howell. The intention of the facility in Bardstown was to quickly service our customers throughout the Louisville, Kentucky area. Our products are large class A stampings and assemblies and structural components of steel and aluminum for all the new vehicles that are coming into the marketplace and being, being revamped like the F-150, uh, the Bronco, which is just a beautiful vehicle, the new Ranger back to the marketplace, Jeep and Pacifica. And our customers are the FCA Group, Ford Motor Company, General Motors and Volvo, just to mention a few. Here at Thai Summit, we're using the latest technology in welding and assembly to bring value to our customers and to, and to sustain our continuous growth. We've won the GM Excellence Award for two consecutive years, and we were the first company in the industry to introduce remote laser welding into the production process. So we really are all about technology. In addition to that, we've been the leader in the use of lightweight materials such as aluminum and magnesium to reduce vehicle weight and improve fuel consumption. We were among the first companies to introduce white light scanning to the production process to improve quality and communication with our customers. We've expanded our ERP system to over 80% utilization in all aspects of operation over the last year, really with our introduction of the CORS Engineering Mach 2 product on the floor. This has made it all possible for us to include our initiatives in our KPI for our last fiscal year, which was most important to our employees at this impacts the bottom line for them in a bonus program. So what did we do? 
we began by upgrading our ERP system and our ERP system allowed us to gather real-time information from production and scrap on the shop floor as it was recorded. The information was then historically uh, stored in the cloud product of our ERP system. However, the key word here is really, we knew what we knew when it was recorded. So if an employee only recorded when a container was full or only recorded at the end of their shift, we really didn't know the efficiency of the machine. So we began to look at products out in the industry that would capture the information from the PLC controller. And we made an executive decision to partnership with uh, Core. You know, as Tony was talking with us, he shared about a rapid transformation and, and the focus on delivery and, and having the right talent. All of that was really key. You have to have a team with the right stakeholders and the right technical knowledge people who really understand what is OEE to do an integration with your machines to your shop floor. But you don't have to have a scientist and you don't have to have someone who has four masters to get it done either. I think really looking at the ease of what this product uh, from the basic training to the shop floor, that deliverable is really pretty amazing. And that is why we chose Mach 2 to begin with. The next step really for us was having the dedicated time to get the job done. We knew that we had a lot of work to do and we believed there was a lot to gain. So our executive team set aside the time for our people to accomplish the task of wiring up all of our work centers here in Howell and at the same time, the facility in Bardstown. In addition, my team has a strength to always build solid documentation for the shop floor to the top floor. So what do I mean by that? I mean that I want standards written for everything that we do. So if you're working on an assembly line today and tomorrow you're on a press or you were just promoted to be a planner, you can go into our library of information and look at the standard operating procedures or watch a training video or review a skill matrix to see who knows what on the shop floor, what your next training should be and you can gather those documents and those different tools that fit your learning style and help you understand what is Mach 2? What does it do? What does OEE mean? What should I be watching for? for and what are these initiatives all about? So getting into the detail of the execution, Tony spoke to uh, some of the detail and, and what it takes and connecting the PLCs. Um, and uh, the training that his organization provides. It's really a very simple, in-depth three-day three -day training you can send uh, your associates to. I think it's important to note that this isn't a one department uh, type of event in implementing the, this product. This really involves a team of different people throughout your organization to make it successful. So uh, IT certainly is involved operations needs to be involved, engineering, maintenance, et cetera. You, you have to look at the sum of the whole of what you want. So you're looking to, to um, bring the floor to life with, with that real-time data association and who are the benefactors of that data. And that should lead you back into who are the proper members for your team. Uh, Ty Summit, um, I have a, a, a method that I use for any project that we do. I call it a, a spreadsheet project and with good old Excel. And we have a very sophisticated document control system that enables us to create that uh, spreadsheet project like a Microsoft project in Excel and update that with team members and set uh, email notifications that anytime any one of us would go and update any of the factors on this spreadsheet, uh, email notification goes out um, to all the members of that group to let them know something new has happened. So it's just incredible, wonderful tool for communication. And, and I'll tell you, you know, several times uh, the team had, had attempted to, to get this launched and they were failing. And the only reason they were failing wasn't that they didn't have the right skill set. It was that communication factor. You know, when you're going to go and integrate a machine, uh, the planners need to know, maintenance needs to know. Uh, the operations needs to know that you're going to be working on the floor in that area. So this tool really helped us tremendously to keep everyone in task. 
um, I don't know that I mentioned anywhere in the presentation, but I will hear, uh, we rapidly deployed both of our plants in over 30 days. Uh, I've got a problem where my slides aren't moving. I froze up. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So the execution, again, um, Tony spoke about um, the intricate details of uh, his client. I don't think today we wanna to spend a lot of time on this. Basically, we are creating the diagram to speak uh, from the machine to the ERP product. I wanna focus on the people and the process and what we learned in the tools to get us to where we are today. Indeed, we did have to configure our machines. We did have the tracking sheet that I mentioned, and we set up a lot of visuals on the shop floor that we're going to get into as we continue in this presentation. So bringing the Mach 2 surge, uh, this is a, how we like to refer to the, the product as a whole. Again, Mach 2 is currently integrated with 46 of our work centers here in the Howell facility. 11 of those machines are presses, 35 are assembly cells, and in our Kentucky facility, we have 10 work centers. Uh, two of those machines are presses and eight are assembly cells. Each of our work centers has a monitor for our ERP control system and each of our work centers has a monitor for viewing Mach 2. We're really gonna get into this monitor in great detail and talk about what it consists. So there are several different pages uh, that are out of the box in the product. Uh, this first page is the graphs page. This is the page that we display on our shop floor. Ours is made up of 10 panels, but when you go through the training, you learn how you can display what you want to display. Of course, this is picking up a lot of information right from our ERP system as well as from the machine. And I'd like to dive into what these panels represent and why Ty Summit decided to use the graphs page as their main monitor. So beginning with OEE, the overall equipment efficiency, it's really what it was all about. So this donut here is showing us the current factors for this current shift. Uh, our OEE is calculated by the industry standard of availability times quality times performance. And our OEE details displays the number of available minutes, time in production versus downtime. It provides the quality of the parts made, the total produced in scrap, and we also see the performance rating, actual produced versus the target rate. This is really powerful information for the floor. I can tell you when we got our first monitors up on the floor, uh, the the um, operators on the um, on the floor, uh, maintenance operations were really excited. The first thing we heard is that information is all wrong, <laughs> and that's pretty typical uh, when you haven't looked at any of your standards in quite a while, and no one's really been paying attention to the detail. It forced us um, back to the mattresses, so to speak, to get into that detail with our engineering group, and we'll review that in detail in some of the following slides. Also on the graphs page, we have the target versus actual for the current shift. So no one wants to see red. Of course, all of our operators wanna see green. This drives a lot of competition out in our shop floor and also a lot of calling facilitators over to question, this can't be right, what's going on? I know my numbers are better. We also have a display in real-time status timeline here that's showing the performance over the last 24 hours. And notice here that we have this color coded to our downtime statuses, which are built within our software system. Uh, part of this project, along with taking us back to reevaluate our production rates, also took us back to reevaluating what are our downtime statuses, what do we want to me measure. And we had to, in fact, redo everything within our ERP system and clean up that data so that our data that we were viewing in real time for Mach 2 was accurate and meaningful. Another page of the graph page shows us our pieces lost. You can see our descriptions here for that. And our parts per hour breaks down the hourly production into a bar graph. 
very powerful for a facilitator walking by the line to see what's going on in real time throughout the day. The graph page also captures for us data from our ERP setup table. So you can see here, I know my part name, my job number, what's my target, what's expected for the day. The total time per shift breaks the machine events down into a chart. And the parts per day shows how many parts were produced within the last week. So I mentioned that Mach 2 doesn't store the data historically, but it captures it, caches it, so that I can review it within, within designated timeframes. The next page that I'd like to share with you is the overview page. Really, this is where the executives and the facilitators and our operation managers can look at a glance, really focusing in on, is there any red? Are there any issues on the floor? And they can draw specific areas then to look at further detail. The action page provides a work center specific information such as setup information and parts per hour. This is over a range of time of what parts are produced as well as scrap and real time status timeline color coded again to match those work center statuses. You know, we, we mainly pull the cycle counter information to populate Mach 2 but we also pull information about our clamp positioning and our temperatures on some of the work centers. While cycle counting is a fairly obvious thing to monitor, the other two things are not. But by monitoring our clamp position on a transfer system, Mach 2 can tell the operator which station is missing a part or has mishandled a part. Now think about that. This cuts down on some of the diagnostic work that we traditionally had to perform. The other item we have been monitoring is oil temperature. In just one of our presses that we've started to look at this, we have had some issues that have been proving so hard to catch and control. But by monitoring it through Mach 2, we're getting a heads up when things are starting to go wrong. And now this is allowing us to improve on those breakdowns when it occurs. So in essence, we're using the information from the monitor for the normal production rates and performance to help us better understand die and stamping issues, as well as helping to alert us to maintenance issues. Overall, we can now develop better plans to get us back up and running faster. This is one of my favorite pages of the Mach 2 product. It is the whiteboard. So traditionally throughout operations, at the end of every line, there is a whiteboard and the employees once an hour go over and they write down how many pieces they produce by looking at the counter on their machine, not necessarily what they've recorded into the ERP system. Those whiteboards are not needed any longer with the Mach 2 product because they're built in. So this captures by hour the actual production. It would also have minutes of downtime. It also captures any scrap and there is ability to add a note. So if I'm down for 26 minutes, and uh, I'm an operator or a facilitator, I can click into this flashboard here and I can enter what the reason is. Now my ERP system has that as well, but I consider this to be that flash screen that anyone could see at any time without having to dig into the details. So it eliminates the need for the boards or for more paper on the shop floor. Across the board here at Thai Summit, we're all about getting the paper off the floor. Even our, our floor auditors now are being done using a Kindle tied to our ERP system and all audits are done and all the log books and all the pieces of paper that were scattered throughout and the bookshelves maintaining those logs have been taken off the floor. Our associates can add notes easily in any of these areas so that we can look at those notes on a daily basis and capture what detail is happening to help improve. I think at this point, I just wanna also mention that um, you're see, you've seen some sl slides of our shop floor, but this is probably one of the cleanest facilities I've ever had the pleasure of working in. We take pride of ownership with our employees. This whiteboard um, is a benefit to them and they really love it. They did not like having to go over and write on those boards throughout the day. Uh, they didn't really feel that they were that was accurate information and um, they really are uh, all about the environment out there and part of the team to make sure that we maintain 
organization in a clean environment, uh, along with the, what's going on right now with COVID. Uh, they are very pleased. In fact, I'm happy to report that when we came back to work here at Thai Summit, 99% um, of our employees were more than happy to come back because they knew they were going to be coming to a safe and healthy environment where their employers uh, had pride of ownership in making sure that we were taking care of our associates that really are our, our organization. And uh, we, our motto here at Thai Summit is we build people before we build parts. And we don't just say that, we really mean it. And we are all about trying to do things to help the people. And this whiteboard, bringing it to life is just another piece of that process. So overall, Mach 2 is now an essential part of our daily business, not just for those of us up in the front office watching, but for our operators. And you know, when, when we bring in new machinery, we have seven major new launches going on. Some of those earlier uh, photos that I showed you, like for instance, the new Ranger, as the machinery is coming into this facility, it is now, an, it, it is now internally set up to configure that machine right from the get-go to speak with Mach 2. So we're completing that integration in our APQP process right through the program management launch. And this is allowing us to now talk with the machine in Mach 2 from PPAP to production. It's quite powerful. Our customers are placing more and more stringent requirements on our weld processes as well. So Mach 2 is allowing us to send any of those weld faults right from the controllers to a downtime report that's built within our ERP system. And then we use this information to generate reports for our customers with our business analysis tools. So we're monitoring through the PLC. We're providing inline labels. We're using our SQL database to integrate for any information that we may need. We're, we have automatic container labeling in process. We've customized our um, color scheme. I have to speak to this because we have really a brilliant guy in our team uh, who is not an engineer and not a master scientist, but quite a talented individual. And he took our integration after our three-day training and, and developed our screens into the Thai Summit logo and color coding, which anyone can do that has a, a knack for designing. So we built our custom displays. We have live scrap monitoring, the machine leaderboards. I spoke about the whiteboards. Uh, mobile device friendly is um, an asset of uh, the, the Mach 2 product. Uh, we have the ability for multi-out data collection, which is key for our stamping environment, and automatic idle to downtime status, which is one of my personal favorites because we've had so many issues on the floor with operators leaving a work center and not logging off. And then of course you get uh, inefficient OEE reporting. So the product allows for that automatic shutdown. So really getting to the surge here for Thai Summit, I want to share with you that we knew how fast our jobs were running. Well, we thought we did until we put in the resources in this project and we reevaluated our cycle rates. I mentioned to you, our operators were concerned that the numbers weren't right. We had to go back to our engineering group and we, we had analyzed the detail and noticed that our standard rates hadn't been looked at in some cases for years. So we had to do new run at rate studies. We touched every single router in thousands of parts here and in Kentucky and analyzed the data over this 30 day time period and kept honing in until we knew that we had it right. Uh, this really rendered a tremendous amount of savings for us um, in the first few months that we began this process. Really within the first 10 minutes of turning on the integration of Mach 2 with our uh, ERP system and a suggestion module that they had, we had opportunities to really redeem over $7 million in savings. The first couple of suggestions were just simply to relocate a sensor for 100% spool utilization. And the second was to redesign a container, a conveyor, I'm sorry, to drive huge savings in labor. Two bodies by shift by line. 
I mean, think about that. That's phenomenal. That information just came from what the employees were now seeing in the Mach 2 real-time data and then logging in their suggestions through the ERP system. So we were asked by management when uh, they got very excited about what they started to see to make our Mach 2 project part of our KPI bonus program. And they challenged us to improve productivity by $5 million over this last fiscal year. So we identified lines in uh, the facility and we put a gold star on the line if it was part of that uh, production efficiency work center that we had outlined, we could gain improvement from what we were seeing in the standards to the reevaluation that we were doing. Within the first six months of that fiscal year, we reached our $5 million. And by the end of the first fiscal year, we had increased our cycle times by over $9 million. So with everyone's help, we have been using this data from Mach 2 to track and address our, efficiency, our inefficiencies throughout the plant. As of today, We've had 143 suggestions on how we can further improve our plan. And over our last fiscal year, just look at this graph and how amazing it is. 9.89 million in improved efficiencies for three days of training and a 30 day launch of an amazing product. So where are we at today with our current optimization? Today, when a high-low is not directly assigned to a work center, they have to be called on a radio. Or when maintenance is needed, it has to be called on a radio. Not everyone has a radio in our shop. Um, when maintenance is needed, it, 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 it has to be called. So you either hop on the PA system, which we're presently replacing with a new VoIP system, or you have to walk around the facility, which is uh, 1.3 million square feet, so it could take you some time. So we're now looking to use Mach 2 to place a call to a high load driver or a maintenance driver with a call button on our controllers and, uh, and or that will alert them on the tablets that I mentioned we're using throughout our floor. We also want to further look at improving our downtime tracking. Um, looking at our employee performance where uh, perhaps uh, skills and training is needed bringing about more machine maintenance visibility, integrating our checking fixtures and warning messages, and fully automating cavity labeling, as well as improving material handling timing uh, through those call buttons. So what are some of the lessons that we've learned here at Thai Summit? Ownership of the Mach 2 product was solely in the hands of the maintenance department when we first began we learned that that was not going to work, of course, and we needed to have that diversified team. The initial understanding of Mach 2 was that it was just tied to machine downtime and reporting. And of course, as we've shown you here today, it's so much more than that. The company here at Thai Summit was only using their ERP system at an average of 35%. So their control plants and FEMAs were all manual. They were missing information in their process routers and targets and standards. And the functional departments were communicating. And this caused the program to initially linger for about two years. It's very important to know the skill set of the players involved. Just in knowing that and bringing the right people to the table, we were able, able to quickly launch this integration across the floor. So in summary, some key takeaways. Real-time shop floor visibility for management, even on the go. Incre increased communication between the shop floor and the management staff. Better cost savings by tracking downtime and actual uh, produced parts. Improvement in standards would increase our overall efficiency. So some other things that we're doing here at Thai Summit today uh, we are uh, really excited about bringing robotic process automation into our um, process. We're building bots 
to provide single data entry between our payroll software and our uh, ERP human capital. Um, a software bot is a program designed to automate the tasks. So the tasks are typically repetitive and, and simple routine. Uh, we're using the bots um, with um, human resource and also with our accounts payable system to uh, match up invoices um, with the program that'll run in the evening into the ERP system. And if everything meets our criteria, then those invoices will automatically populate into the accounts payable invoice module and the uh, accounts payable team can then focus only on issues that need their intention instead of the day-to-day -day, um, manual routine of posting those invoices. We're also launching a new VoIP a phone system across both of our facilities with video messaging and uh, plant PA system, removing uh, desk phones and uh, moving everything further into the cloud and we are integrating uh, skill matrix dashboards. I've touched on that briefly, but these dashboards will be posted in a, a very large uh, screen out on our shop floor as an aid to our facilitators and leaders showing what associates are trained in what areas. So if you come on uh, third shift and 20% of your workforce is called off, you can refer to this uh, dashboard, automated dashboard, and understand very easily what operators have been trained in what facets of assembly or uh, HILO or press to be able to move around your crew as need be. And finally, I just want to uh, point out that nothing is done anywhere without uh, an excellent team. And I am very blessed here at Thai Summit to have uh, what I call my rock star team uh, throughout um, all of this process and in integrating Mach 2, but what we've gone through with the COVID-19 crisis, my team quickly built um, uh, a CDC questionnaire for our employees that's used on every shift as everyone walks into our building. We've installed thermal cameras in every entrance door throughout that um, rapidly tell us if anyone has any conditions. I'm happy to report We've not had a single issue with any employee or family member uh, having this terrible virus. Um, uh, but this team has really worked together with the operations to make sure that we could bring the facility back up quickly and rapidly. And just more of that automation that really began for us with the Mach 2 product. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for your patience and listening to our story. And good day. <laughs>